Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, October 16th, 2020, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, I really wanted to get into the Bell Beaker culture in Europe. That would be this culture somewhere about 2400 BC, roughly, in uh, various parts of Europe. And uh, if you're a new subscriber to this channel, then you might not know about this. I already covered it in a previous video. Um, the Adina and Beaker humanoid cousins. And I read this article from Ancient Origins by uh, Jason Jarrell and Sarah Farmer, which is an excellent article. I'm not even sure if I finished. I was kept on getting cut off in my videos back then. So I may not have finished the article, but we're probably going to go over it again because it's just interesting what they say. And they're excellent researchers as well. Um, they wrote this book, which I really want to get. I haven't got promised myself I would. I got to get it now. It says, Ages of the Giants, A Cultural History of the Tall Ones in a Prehistoric America. For more than a century now, across the eastern portion of North America, burials of ancient people who possessed a very tall stature have been uncovered. Ages of the Giant utilized actual archaeological reports and records of American antiquarians, along with numerous historical chronicles and press accounts to document the cultures of a distinct subpopulation of large, powerfully built individuals of extraordinary height who inhabited ancient North America for thousands of years. The product of a decade of research, including fieldwork at ancient sites and the study of thousands of pages of archaeological literature, Ages of the Giants traces the history of the ancient tall ones across four millennia and features in-depth descriptions of the cultures they founded, as well as their traditions, cosmology, and so patterns. I'm very interested in reading this book, and I mean, it would be essential for me to do that since they did such great research. You see, the only problem I have with them, okay, based on this article I mentioned in a video I did about it, was that they also believe about this colonization of the Americas based on these accounts of the past. I mean, look, everything has to be parsed in a way that makes sense anyway, but, you know, it's my belief that, it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be one way. It seems that all the influence in the Americas always comes from outside it, where you have things like the camel and the horse came to essential animals in a, pro, you know, uh, progress of human beings on this planet came from the Americas millions of years ago, they say, if they have their dating right, which, you know, I highly doubt, and all sorts of things are covered up, okay, and they're, they're, the way they document the layering, the stratification of the layers of sediments and sedimentary stratification, it doesn't match, the Americas does not match a lot of other areas, and there's good reasons for that if you're subscribed to, like, Bill Akovsky's theories about here's the uh, planet coming close to another planet, this uh, interplanetary electrical discharge, which is, you know, demonstrated by the Grand Canyon here, which is a giant Lichtenberg figure that's provided by the Thunderbolts Project, who carries on Bill Akovsky's work. I mean, all these patterns created by lightning. This Lichtenberg figure pattern is the same as you can see across this planet. So if something did occur like this, something and something did, the Grand Canyon being demonstrable of this is this giant Lichtenberg figure. This has got burned into the earth by interplanetary electrical discharge and most likely it popped out the other side in the eye of the Sahara was caused by it leaving. Here's where it entered, here's where it left. But that's just my supposition based on what I know about Thunderbolts 
um, research, et cetera, et cetera. So if something wiped out the Americas, especially North America, who's to say, and I always say this, there's no reason or evidence to suggest one way or the other that this is the new world when it could very well be a world much older than we think. We know from Michael Cremo's Forbidden Archaeology that the lady geologist from the University of Chicago that was asked to go do the dating of an archaeological site where evidence of human habitation or, uh, you know, uh, evidence of humans were in this particular layering of soil down in South America, I believe Ecuador or Colombia, something like that. And she found it to be like 300,000 years old or 350,000 years old, which would put the Americans on par with the bad, just about anywhere else on the planet. But it can't be that way because of the out of Africa theory and all this. And this is what mainstream believes and everything. There's good evidence to suggest that human beings develop everywhere on this planet at some specific time in the past. It's not out of Africa and all, and all these other humanoids that exist in the past. Okay, this lady refused to back down. She's a professor there, and she refused to back down from her findings. And she's, you know, subsequently fired for that and, you know, just blacklisted from the whole academic community because she believes it's okay. So, look, there's reasons why things could happen here that we don't know anything about, things about the past, etc. But... What Jason Jarrell and Sarah Farmer believe, and like Brian Forster believes when he relates the elongated skulls to the Paracas people with the people of the Black Sea, you know, obviously, you know, the Paracas people have to come from the Black Sea area because it's the new world and everybody has this new world, which in itself is theoretical, okay? Who big he, and again, by Charles C. Mann's book, Okay, 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus, and the archaeologists and anthropologists doing work down there in South America and finding these older and older and older and older civilizations down there, organized societies, okay, where they told man that maybe Sumeria wasn't the cradle of civilization. Maybe it was the Americas, okay? That's what they're starting to think. When you're looking at these things, okay, it's not coming from me or alternative researchers, or whatever. It's making the mainstream researchers rethink the whole story, okay? So when they say the influence in the Americas could have came from Asia or Africa or whatever it is, I'm saying there's no reason to believe that it wasn't the other way around and something destroyed the Americas and we don't know anything about it because so little evidence exists, but it's there and we talk about it on this channel, okay? And about who were building all these giant stone structures of the past. Well, it seems certain to me that if these giant-sized people existed in the past, there's good reason to believe it was they who were the experts at Stonework. This is how it worked in the world. That certain peoples known for certain traditions and craftsmanship in certain different things. Okay? And what I'm saying also about these Bell Beaker culture and how it relates to the Hopewell and the Adena. Okay, first of all, we know from just recent archaeological um, data done by the University of Indiana, by Indiana archaeologists, okay, on Hopewell and Adena sites, okay, they're saying now that they think that they were contemporaries, okay, so. Whereas before, just not too long ago, they were thinking that these were two separate cultures, one following the other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It wasn't that way at all, you see. So when we talk about the Hopo, we're also talking about the Adena, okay? So who are these uh, Bell Beaker, how are they related to it? Well, that's what Sarah Farmer, uh, Jason Jarrell and Sarah Farmer go over in this uh, article in Ancient Origins here, which I've done a little bit about 
before, but let's take a look at what it says about the Bell Beaker culture here. The Bell Beaker culture, or in short, Beaker culture, is an archaeological culture named after the inverted Bell Beaker drinking vessel used at the very beginning of the European Bronze Age. Arising from around 2800 BC, it lasted in Britain until as late as 1800 BC, but in continental Europe on, only until 2300 BC, when it was succeeded by the Unitist culture. The culture was widely dispersed throughout Western Europe, from various regions in Iberia and spots facing Northern Africa to the Danubian Plains, in the islands of Great Britain and Ireland, and also the islands of Sicily and Sardinia. Very interesting there. The Bell Beaker culture follows the Corded Ware culture, and for North Central Europe, the Funnel Beaker culture. The name Glockenbecker was coined for its distinctive style of beakers by Paul Renick. In 1900, the term's English translation, Bell Beagle, was introduced by John Abercrombie in 1904. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole Bell Beagle thing to you here from Wikipedia because it's a complete fantasy story made up by people who are trying to interpret the past, and obviously they're interpreting it in the wrong way. <clears throat> okay, when it seems that these people are so much related, and we're going to see why in a second here, the Adina and the Bell Beagle culture here, although as in Jason Jarrett, article with Sarah Farmer here, they say that the Adina were bigger than the Bell Beaker people and their craniums were larger than the Bell Beaker people. So as you know already I'm trying I'm doubting this, you know, uh, diffusion from Europe into the Americas because why would they be smaller and then come to the Americas and get bigger all of a sudden? I don't think so. But okay, so in any case Let's look at why here, and, you know, it's mentioned down here in the physiology of these people here, and, you know, these are all, the, whatever they say in between here is, you know, some of it is fact, obviously, what they find and everything, but the whole in-between story is made up by all of them. Okay, so... Physical anthropology, historical craniometric studies found that the Beaker people appeared to be a different physical type than those earlier populations in the same geographic areas. And who's to say, here's where I'm going to call BS on this, because if you, if the Indiana archaeologists and anthropologists are finding this relationship between the Hopewell, who were just average-sized people, apparently, and the Adena, these extremely large-sized, large-boned people, okay, not suffering from gigantism or acromegaly, as they want to say wherever. And there's another thing about Jason Jarrell and Sarah Farn, they say in the northeastern area, the story of these ancient giants. Well, I went over on my channel where they just found everywhere in America, and mounds are found everywhere in just every, every state in America. Okay, so look, it's just, they're narrowly confining this down to these areas, like around the Ohio and Ohio Valley or whatever it is. It's just... Probably not, folks. It's not by what we already know. So, in any case, let's listen to what they say. Craniometric studies found that the bigger people appear to be a different physical type than those earlier populations in the same geographic area. So, again, I'm going to say maybe those early populations were an earlier population, but they're living together simultaneously in the same relationship that the Adena had with the Hopewell. And they're not getting this. They're just not seeing it. They're not getting it. But it probably was that way if it was this way with the Adena and demonstrable today by the Watusi people in Africa and the chiefs of the Fiji Islands. Okay, We know about those ones, the giants ruling over people of um, you know, average size. They were described as tall, heavily boned, and brachylocephalic. Okay, you got that right there, brachylocephalic. Okay, the cephal index cranial index is in the ratio of maximum width of the head of an organism multiplied by 100 divided by its maximum length. The index is okay, so it's an index brachycephalic, but it also means people who look like this. Okay, brachycephalic. Okay, not the elongated heads. That's dolichocephalic. Okay, so. This is, you know, a different kind of skull shape, but the Dina and the Beaker people shared this. This is what this is saying here, okay? The early studies on the Beakers, which were based on the analysis of the skull arrangements, were craniometric, okay? 
just saying a measurement. They're using it in a context. In this context, as describing these people, this is just describing what it is, an index or whatever it is. It's not describing what they are, okay? So this is what they're talking about, okay? They're beating around the bush, obviously. Unless you're going to sit there and do all the research to figure this all out from their stupid article in Wikipedia, the retarded encyc online encyclopedia for retards, okay? So, look. You know, they're saying it at least they're brachycephalic, okay? So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about this, all right? So what about their pottery, okay? They talk about the pottery with their name after the pottery. So let's look at some of this pottery that they're doing here, okay? There's some of it right there. Very nice. Here's some of it here. And they say that this is corded wear, and this sort of corded wear not sure if I had that here, but oh, corded wear is also in some time zone around when these people lived. Okay, so it's a corded wear type, what you would call corded wear. Okay, here's another one. Okay, and here's some more. Okay, you see what these look like right here. Okay, very interesting looking, right? So Let's look at some of the pottery from uh, the Hopewell, which we know the Hopewell and the Dina are the same shared culture. They're not different cultures or anything like that, but we'll look at what they have on them both. See, they haven't integrated this in, these new findings into everything, so it hasn't diffused out yet. Their papers, their college research papers that they're doing or whatever it is, and peer-reviewed and you know, voted for as the best theory um, of 2020 or whatever the heck it is, okay, before it, they're not there yet, okay, so, but we've gone over it on this channel, the actual, you know, paper, research papers, all right, so let's look at some Hopewell pottery, so here's examples of some Hopewell pottery, all right, you can see some fine examples here, very nice pottery that he did, especially this one is of high interest to me. This is like corded ware, okay? This is what they call coil type pottery made with coils, okay? Corded coils, okay? You see this thing here, right? I'm going to show another picture of it. Bam, here's some very nice stuff, by the way. Okay, so coil pottery, Native American coil pottery. Okay, here's one of, this is what they're saying from the Adena Hopewell culture. Okay. See anything? That might be similar here. Okay, with the pottery that's found with the Adena and Hopewell and these Bell Beaker people. Well, I do. I see some similarities here, some obvious similarities here, okay. They just happen to be built the same. Here's another one. This is Adena pottery, okay. All right, so you see the similarities in the pottery there, the similarities in the physiology of these people are just, it's just too coincidental for me, so... You know, what we may be talking about is a people such as this living around a whole northern rim of the Atlantic from the Americas into Europe and down into Europe. So here's some of the areas that they cover. Okay, so here's the Bell Beaker people. Okay, some area that they cover here, right? So... And this would be the area of the Hopewell interaction sphere up into Canada here, all the way down to the southern coast of the uh, United States here. Okay, similar territory. We go the Adena, which they're, you know, I say they're making a mistake. I mean, the Adena mounts, as far as I know, from archaeology, are found all the way into Pennsylvania. So this is, you know, they, they, you know, that's actual research. So narrowly putting it down into the Ohio area here is not exactly explaining it 100%. Okay, so and besides the fact, there is no separation between the Adena culture and the Hopewell culture, not anymore. Okay, so if that's the case, all right, 
there's no reason to believe that probably the same thing was going on with the Bell Beaker people in their area of the world. And they've got this story of them, what the people that came before them were not the same size. It said they got the story all wrong. And most likely the same di social dynamic was going on in this culture as well. Like the Adina, these people were the aristocracy, the royalty, whoever was the biggest humanoids around, okay? They're, you know, whether they achieved their class by force or not, who knows? But they seemed that they were rather sophisticated, like the Galena people were, and talk about that, okay? If you have no I you might be a new subscriber, you didn't know that I reviewed this book by C. W. Sharam, <clears throat> okay, who's really Kurt W. Marrick, a former guy who worked for the Ministry of Propaganda for the Nazis, who came here to America, who didn't like the Nazis, okay, if he could, anybody could recognize BS, it was this guy, and his interest was archaeology, he read everything about it, he knew everything about it, okay, he's a very um, uh, well-educated professional writer, okay, and he called bullshit on American archaeology. He sort of, you know, he wasn't irreverent in his writing. He was very polite in his writing, but in a sort of underhanded way, criticized American. He says the story of North American archaeology, well, part of the story, and we've gone through it as we went through Strand's book, was that archaeology in the United States was being suppressed. Suppressed. If anybody would know if something was being suppressed, it would have been C.W. Strand. That's the guy that you want on your team, okay? Somebody's going to know a BS story when he hears one, okay? So this suppressed archaeology is about what happened at Galena Canyon. If you haven't seen it on my channel and you're a new subscriber, you better go back and watch it because that's a pretty important video. And it would seem that an archaeological site in the Americas where... Um, you would find 500, 500, 25 to 30 foot high stone built towers, okay, with finely cut limestone slab bases, okay, 500 in the United States. This is not a national park site. This is not an archaeological site in the Americas for some reason still from 1971 when Saram wrote the book, okay. It's not uh, not discussed at all. And Frank C. Hibbins' work, and also about this, the Sandia man there in New Mexico. Uh, Frank C. Hibbins was the uh, archaeologist for the University of New Mexico, UNM, okay? And he, you know, was... Uh, a great researcher and told us all about these people who live in these fine, fine towers that were made with all these ergonomic uh, built-in things to their furniture and um, painted walls and stucco walls with these beautiful designs and whatnot. Okay, so you're trying to tell me these people were the cannibals that the Paiutes describe and the peaceful um, Pueblo ancient Pueblo people describe and everything. And it's, the whole thing is confused. Ancient enemy turned from the old ones to the old enemies or ancient enemies. They, you know, they changed the translation to fit their story and all this kind of stuff. Okay, this propaganda story against the large humanoid people, which I review on my channel. This is another thing. This is the stuff that Saram was getting at. What I'm revealing to you on my channel Okay, we're getting to the bottom of this, not with all these other rabbit holes that you sent down to think about all these people, okay? And the Bell, Pe Bell Beaker culture here is no different here, okay? So what do they know about these people? Do they really know anything about these people? Well, Bell, Be Bell Beaker, Glockenbecker, was introduced as a term of the art artifact type at the beginning of the 20th century, recognition of an archaeological Bell Beagle culture has long been controversial. And you know why it's controversial, guys? It's because they were these weird, brachylocephalic people that they don't know anything about, where they came from, and all this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you the reason why is they got the story wrong. 
okay, that these ancient giants, which we're going to be going over in future episodes of the um, quote-unquote giants or large hominids, as I like to call them international, the second part of my series, looking at the accounts of these things, okay, these are the people we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about people like the Bell Beaker people or similar to or related to these, all these various kind of humanoids and hominids going on in the past that we can only imagine in pure fantasy, like beyond J.R.R. Tolkien, etc. Okay, with some sort of technology way beyond ours that would make us think of aliens but they're not really aliens it's all home homegrown homemade right here on good old planet earth okay so they're not you know from aliens or anything like that get get that out of your head before you get there you have to go through all these other po- all their possibilities that are closer to a reality that's irrational okay all right so Look, <clears throat> has long been controversial because of the, these giant humanoids, okay, with these craniums like this, okay, and they're always referring to them as being smarter or whatever it is, but it has, the size of the brain has nothing to do with smarts, okay? Recent research, okay, the people who research the brain have found because of doing animal studies in some of these animals who are phenomenally smart like dolphins and the octopus, a weird creature that looks alien, that lives right here on this planet. Okay, those things in uh, uh, that movie, that the Arrival, okay, they were like octopus creature, like octopus creature that lives right in the ocean, as smart as could be when they do the experiments with them. I, I love talking about the story there, about this aquarium that you know uh, there a you know public uh, aquarium there in uh you know a marine aquarium there in uh, europe somewhere where this you know they, they had fish in the tanks there and they were disappearing and they were just like wondering when you know, i didn't find them outside of the tanks and it seemed to be eaten by something but they couldn't figure out what or what the, they put up cameras around the aquarium there and it, apparently the octopus was getting out of his tank and wandering around the aquarium there picking out fish he wanted to eat and then he'd go in their tank and eat him and then go back to his tank you know, so like, how smart are these things, you know? So they did the experiment. They put the crab in a jar in the tank with the octopus. And the octopus, you know, spends a couple of minutes, you know, feeling up the the jar and everything. And it's got a lid on it, you know, and it's got the crab inside. You know, this thing has never seen a jar before in its life. Okay. Feels around the top of the jar and then, you know, takes the whole body up on the top of the jar and whoosh, unscrews the freaking jar. I mean, how smart is that? Can, you know, is a dog going to do that or whatever? I mean, you know, the thing is incredibly smart. His brain is obviously very small. It has nothing to do with the size of the brain. It has to do with the structure, structure of the brain. Now, dolphins have, you know, very um, advanced brains as far as scientists are concerned. They think that they might even be smarter than us, but they don't need cars and planes and trains or whatever. They live in the ocean. They get clay and... You know, do whatever they do as the dolphins in the sea. They don't need to do any of these things, okay? But they could, I guess, if they had some need to do it. They don't have any need to do any of that stuff. But their brains are like, they do certain things with their brains that scientists are just mesmerized by. And maybe these Adina and Beaker people also had different properties to their brains, you know, including telepathy or whatever it means. I'm just saying, you know, and... I was just listening to Robert Seffer's latest um, video, uh, live video about uh, Gilgamesh, was he a real person or not or whatever. He's talking about hybrid humanoids bred to be workers uh, in the past or whatever, but we're going to talk about that in the future that deals with, you know, the Bigfoot subject because I think that's what we're talking about. Who mined up all those, all the copper from the Michigan Peninsula? Well, there may have been people engineered, and we were engineered too. And you're just talking about it because of corn. There is no way caveman people develop corn. Okay, that the University of California says 
is the great single greatest feat of genetic engineering by ancient man of, of all time. Of all time. Okay, some eight to nine thousand years ago, they say. Okay, even though they found corn pollen some eighty thousand years old. Maybe the story of the past is different than we think. Like I said, in Michael Cremos reading archaeologist woman dated these things is coming from like 300,000 years ago, 300,000 years ago, okay? Folks, our whole story of the past is like one complete made-up story by these people who say that they are the experts at this, okay? 100% made-up story, okay? When it's well, just, you know, Mary had a little lamb, whatever, you know, see Dick run, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about what they explain to us as history is nothing, absolutely no bearing on what the past really was at all. Okay? A totally different story. The past is so incredible. Hey, Mallory. Good night. Good night. I'll see you. Are you staying here all night? I don't know. But I'm doing a video right now, so you're in the video. I hate to tell you. I am? Yeah. What is it? Oh, don't worry about it. What? Watch it tomorrow. What is it? No, don't. Come on. I, I got I to gotta keep doing it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So long, kid. It's my co-worker, Mallory, leaving for the night. So, anyway, look, I just got distracted totally by that. So, in, in any case, it's, look, it's not the, it's not the size of the brain. It's the structure of the brain. And... Who knows with these people here. And back to the Bell Beaker people. These are similar people, it seems, to the Adina. What they're getting wrong. All this stuff is complete fantasy stories in this article in Wikipedia. Right? It's probably the same dynamic was going on with these people and the other peoples in these areas in Europe. And they just don't have that story at all. Correct. Right, or anything about the past, but we're getting evidence of it from it here on this channel by other people. Even uh, Andrew Collins of Megalithomania just wrote a book recently, I think for 2019 or whatever, talks about these hybrid humanoids all over the planet. Look, this is what science is revealing, folks. Don't let them kid you or whatever. They give this sort of, you know, kindergarten history to us about the past when we go to public school or whatever if you learn more in college it's whatever they say it was okay it's similar to that and i go over this with the you know which nobody has really covered okay they're getting this wrong with the bell beaker people obviously they have been for many many years with the adina and the hopewell now they're starting to understand it you know these people living simultaneously together in this dynamic the social dynamic of you know large humanoid to average sides regular people whatever so look it's just a different story and like real back ruins for example okay here's some real back ruins all right and here's what came after that okay we're going over this in real back styles video Okay, the whole central area of this complex, building complex, collapsed. And you can see on the left, the crude repair, mortar and stone repair, and these wooden planks used to hold up this part of the building. You see from this point downward, it's a completely different structure. All right. So you're going to tell me you're going to carve all the stuff in stone, and instead of having stone lentils, you're going to have... Um, wooden lentils. What they're doing is they're carbon dating the wood or tree ring dating the wood that's put in this temple here and attributing it to whoever built the entire structure when it was clearly was repaired. It obviously was repaired and the real real back structures look more like this. This one is where the center hat wasn't collapsed. Okay. These buildings here with finely cut stone and no mortar could rival modern day buildings. They're just so unbelievable. Okay. 
And this is what the Mayan did with them when they found them. They created these serpent mouth entrances to them. But this is all repair work to something that was there already. You can see from this point downward was the original structure. And they put these wooden planks in to do the repair. Because they couldn't do it with stone lentils. Okay, and part of these things could have been part of another design. When the walls collapsed, they incorporated some of these things back into the wall, but they didn't know. And you can see evidence of their crummy repair work in many of these structures. Okay, and these parts here were totally created by them. This was their best work, but it's not the original work. These were not the original people. The more they dig down, they find more precise cut stone. They don't find what you would typically see on these ruins, which is the Mayan repair work in some instances. Otherwise, these buildings were like finely built stone apartment buildings, just unbelievable stone cut buildings with these really super fine work in them. These things were built afterwards, okay? To show that, right, these monster mouth thingies. And you can clearly see the repair, how they put this wooden, wooden lentils in and built. And just recently, I went over this on my channel too. The universe, Cornell University in New York was saying about how radiocarbon dating is off to such an extent that everything needs to be redone again. And that they were making some errors in judgment with the wood that was reused over and over and over again there in the deserts in the Middle East. Okay, and then to do the tree ring dating and the carbon dating to the wood, but the wood is being reused again and again and again for thousands of years because there's no wood in the desert. Okay, so they reuse the wood over and over again. And this is what they found while reviewing some of the archaeology done there in the Middle East. Okay, so here in this case, they're making this mistake. Okay, the Mayans did these repairs and created these monster mounds. But in fact, the people who created these finely built structures here were the ones who were there first before the Mayan. And when did these people exist? They have the dating all screwed up because the surface of the planet was destroyed in the Americas was totally so the stratification and the soil layering and all that kind of they have it all completely they're trying to reckon it with the rest of the world and even though they can see some major events here and there in uneroded parts they're making some huge errors Okay, and this is why it's always mistaken as the new world. There couldn't have been people here in the past, like there have been around the world, everybody coming out of Africa, etc. It's all baloney stories and completely theoretical. Okay, and they all vote on their favorite theories. All right. If this happened in the Americas here, you'd have no idea what kind of destroyed in other areas of the North America. You can clearly see, you can all hear about it on Thunderbolt Channel which is what this is all about, all right? Thunderbolts, all right? The whole surface there in North America was totally destroyed, just completely destroyed. So how would they reckon the layering similar to everywhere on the planet is supposed to be the same, right? So, you know, it's the new world, the new world. Baloney, it's the new world, okay? The Beaker culture people are the diaspora of the Adena people who are clearly larger people with more, higher vaulted craniums, more, uh, you know, uh, cubic centimeters there in their heads, okay? So whatever it is, bigger than the Beaker people, but similar in so many respects. And here you can see with the pottery, it is just so similar, and these people happen to be making pottery it's relatively and existed around the same times, although 
I always say, because they have their new world bias and they're doing it intentionally, they move all the dates up in these periods. They don't know enough because they didn't do enough archaeology here in the Americas and they only do a tiny bit now, but enough now that they know that the Hopewell and the Adena were contemporaries. And that's something to say. If you want to reckon these Bell Beaker people, like, Jason uh, Jarrell and Sarah Farmer, you have to think about these things. So, you know, like I disagree with them and I disagree with Brian Foster. Like maybe, and here's where we find that most accounts in the whole entire world of the giant humanoids in the Americas, especially North America here, okay, that this culture and the ideas for many cultures in the world. Um, were diffused from America outward, okay? Call me crazy, you know, Robert Schock wants to say Indonesia with the pyramid builders outward, well, I say different. I say it came from the Americas, okay? Just like the archaeologists and anthropologists are saying down there in South America, maybe Sumeria wasn't the cradle of civilization. Maybe the Americas were, okay, with our corn, engineered corn and everything smacks of a more advanced civilization. No cavemen were genetically engineering corn, something we couldn't even do today. Corn is impossible, folks. It can't live without us. Why would there be a plant on this planet that can't live without human beings to manage it? Made by cavemen? I highly doubt that. Highly doubt that. Okay, go over it on my channel, folks. If you're a new subscriber, you're going to hear a lot of things on my channel you don't hear anywhere else, and you're not going to. All right? So anyway, guys, like I said, the Bell Beaker people, that's who we're going to be talking about in these accounts coming up with the Giants, okay? And who were they really? And I say that they were the diaspora of the Adena and most likely living in a similar social dynamic culture like they Dina and the Hopewell here in Europe they just they don't see that they're blind to that because not relating the two cultures as possibly an extension of each other but from the Americas outward not inward it's not the new world it's the older world maybe where Atlantis really was Maybe it was the way it's described. It could very well be America. Okay. All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, please hit the like button if you did. And if you do not subscribe, please do subscribe. And thank you for watching. All right, guys. Bugcat7 sign out. Coming up soon with the giant video for you right away. Probably Ireland, UK, British Isles, something like that. All right. Well, Cat7 signing out. Peace.